Hey guys, what's up? I am so excited today to show you this terrain mapper. I can't believe I got it done and we are gonna go through it. So if you remember from the first video, what we were trying to create was a two dimensional real time color terrain map that can give you a sense for where the potential best landing spots would be for a craft. Now I've got this thing hooked up to just the simple Rover and we're gonna drive this thing around and try to find a perfect landing spot. Then we'll take a craft that's in orbit and try to land it at that target landing spot. Now you may be thinking, why can't I just look at the terrain and find the perfect spot? Well, as you can see, if we didn't land in the perfect spot, and I would say the perfect spot is this dark gray area over here, right? Because we know that's flat, but this is all crater pockmarked. Well, even if you land in a non-optimal spot, you wanna be able to find a relatively flat terrain within this area because sometimes humping it all the way over to that flat spot is not an option. Before I start looking for my spot, I wanna give you a really brief explanation of how this terrain map works. It's a 15 by 15 pixel grid of individual colors representing the relative terrain heights of those grid locations. The black square here represents our craft, up is north, down is south, and then east and west. And as I move across the terrain, you'll be able to see I, I move through this grid square. The colors represent the relative terrain heights with the green color being approximately what your craft is at right now, red being above, blue being below, and all the colors in between scaling there. Below the grid, you'll see these two values. First is grid width. That represents the distance represented by the entire grid. So five kilometers in this case, and we can change that using slider one, and I'll show you how that works. So I zoom out and you'll see I've got a much wider view of the entire area. And then the color resolution of 31 meters means from one color to the next represents a change of approximately 31 meters. So we're dealing with some pretty large gradients here, but we can zoom that all the way into a one meter resolution, which of course in this case doesn't add any value. So you do have to do a little bit of tuning with these sliders, but it's really not that bad once you get used to it. For now, I'm just gonna fast forward through me finding a perfect terrain spot. And to start with, I know that these craters are not great, so I'm gonna get out of the crater and start looking. Okay, now that I'm out of the crater, I can see I'm in a relatively flat spot here, but I'm not sure where around here is gonna be the actual perfect spot to land. So let me just go ahead and start doing some zooming. Now, as I zoom, you'll see these areas really start to pop out the differences in the terrain. And the problem with this program is that deep purple color, just because it's the same deep purple color in those areas doesn't actually mean anything. I've been debating changing that to another color, but it works just to know if you see the deep purple color, that does not mean that's a flat spot to go to. It just means the terrain is below what you've set your resolu overall resolution to here. Okay, but I think I see a potential candidate over here and we're gonna head over there. So that's straight up east. So here's where the power of the terrain mapper really comes into play. Because if I'm just looking at this terrain, it's really hard to tell what those tiny little gradients are in terrain height. But if, if I zoom this in and really set the resolution up high, I can see that I'm actually kind of working my way through a small channel here. You can see that green area really moves along here. Now, well, I'm very lucky to see that even when I'm zooming in, I've got this pretty flat spot of green surrounding me here for at least a couple hundred meters. I could probably head south and maybe get a little bit better area. And you can test this by watching this rover just kind of navigate the terrain really slowly on its own. It's at 10x fast forward, and it's just kind of drifting across the terrain because the traction on the moon is not awesome. And so it'll eventually just drift its way into a flat pocket. But I wanna head just a little bit south from here and try to center myself in that area.
All right, it does seem like I'm slowly sliding there, which, you know what? That's okay. This is a very, very good landing spot. Looks super flat. And on the terrain map, you can see it's pretty darn close. I mean, the resolution we're dealing with here is one meter. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this spot, switch to my orbiter and try and land it here and see how it ends up working. Okay, so I'm in orbit now and I can see my terrain mapper down there. That's exactly where I wanna land. Now I chose a craft here with basically unlimited DV just so that I could get this perfect on the first try. I'm gonna go ahead and start burning until I get it pretty close. I'm really bad at this. Okay, so not a perfect landing, but you can see because we've scoped out this spot, sure, it's moving around, but let me see if I can turn off the RCS. Fast forward a little bit, perfect, stable. So let me unlock that so it's not so annoying. So we found a pretty decent spot, and sure, I could have spent more time scoping out an absolutely perfect spot, but as you can see, this is not an optimal location to begin with. So I think we did a pretty good job given the constraints we had. And that's how you use our 2D terrain mapper. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. See you later.